So this is a pretty complicated uh, technique, so it's good to be able to follow through uh, in the book. Whose book was this? Mine. Yours? Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to share or whatever, but uh, here's the book back. So here's the basic method uh, for these redox um, reactions. So we want to balance this reaction. Now, why is this more complicated than the problem that we just did? Well, the first thing that makes it more complicated is that it is an aqueous solution, which means that water may participate in the reaction. Since water is the solvent, water might participate in the reaction, which means we might have to add water to one of the sides of the equation. Also notice that this is an acidic solution, which means that we might have to add protons to the reaction. Well, those are two complications that we didn't have for the previous example, so that's why this type of redox reaction is much more complicated. So there's a step-by-step -step method, so let's try going through those steps. Um, so uh, we can kind of read through them uh, one by one. So here's our first step. So what's, what's the first step? To divide it into two half reactions. So what would the half reactions be here? Well, one half reaction here would involve the chromium species. So we would have the half reaction with the Cr2O7. And the Cr3+. plus. And what would the other half reaction be? I minus R2. I think it's pretty clear that the iodine should go, both go in the same half reaction and the chromium should both go in the same half reaction. So that's that first step of breaking this into half reactions. Right? What does the book say is the next step? Balance the atoms and charges in each half reaction. Good. What does it go on to say? Oh, after that? Or? Sure. Um, step three? Oh, let's see. I think they gave us some more details oh. about how to balance those. Oh, in order. So, yeah. atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen, then oxygen, and then hydrogen. Good. So, so they said, first, balance the elements other than oxygen and hydrogen. For example, here, that means to balance the chromiums. Mm -hmm. How can we make this equation balanced in chromiums? Put a 2 over here. Then there's two chromiums on the right and two chromiums on the left. Notice that so far we're ignoring the oxygen and we're ignoring the charges because we're just following the step-by-step -step process. All right, so they said to balance things starting with the non-oxygens and non-hydrogens. Let's do that down here. How would we balance this? Two on this side. Here we would put these two over here. Notice that we can't change these subscripts because that would give us a different chemical species. All we can do is put in stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, so what does it tell us to balance next? Now we balance the oxygens. Does it say what we're going to balance the oxygens with? Uh, uh, maybe they didn't include that in that part. Water that's right. Yes. We're going to balance it with waters. That's right. All right, so let's go up to here. Which side do we need to add the waters to? Right. Yeah, and how many waters do we need? Seven, because that will give seven oxygens on the right to balance the seven oxygens on the left. Pardon? 14 H's on that side. That's right, so you moved ahead to the next step. Very good. The next thing they said to do was balance the hydrogens. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know? Now, we're, not gonna, we're gonna use H plus. How do we know that there are H pluses available? Because it was acidic solution. By the way, later maybe we'll also see how to balance things in basic solution. In basic solution, we wouldn't use H plus. We would use hydroxide, so we can talk about that later. That's a little bit more, uh, more complicated. So here we're gonna use um, H plus. Uh, and we need the H pluses on the left, just like you were saying. And how many H pluses do we need? 14 H pluses. Very good. You can see why we, that we have to do these in order. We wouldn't know how many H pluses we needed until we had knew how many waters we had. Okay, and let's go back down to here. Well, this half reaction was simpler because there were no oxygens or hydrogens to balance. So we don't need to add any waters. And since we don't need to add any waters, we don't need to add any H plus. So this is pretty much already finished. All right, um, so let's see. We balanced the um, non-oxygens and hydrogens, then we balanced the oxygens, then we balanced the hydrogens. What did they tell us to do next? It says, if necessary, multiply one or both. I think we reactions. skipped a step. Uh, they might have said to balance the charges. Let's yeah, see. I thought, yeah. Yeah, charges balanced by adding electrons. For example, let's start with a simpler case down here. How can we balance the charge down here? Right now, this has, a uh, this has a negative charge. So how many electrons do I need over here? Just one. One. Two. Two. 
Yeah. Oh. Because this has negative two charge, right? Each iodide has a negative charge, but there's two of them. That gives it a negative two charge overall. That's why we had to balance the iodines first before we could balance the charges, because until we did that, we didn't know how many charges there were. So we need two electrons here to balance this. All right, now this one's going to be more complicated. You might need to work this out on paper. So let's see how we're going to balance the charges here. Seventeen electrons. Yeah. Do you no? Well, do you? So it's two minus two times by seven. That kind of. Well, is this the charge on each individual oxygen, or is it the charge on the entire ion? Uh, entire ion. It's the charge on the entire ion. That's right. This notation means this was the charge on the entire ion. That's right. Uh, now it is true that these ox these oxygens have oxidation numbers of negative two. But notice that in this method, we didn't have to find the oxidation numbers. We don't need the oxidation numbers to use this method. Um, and these, the negative twos on these oxygens would be balanced by the positive charges on the chromiums. And it turns out that at the end of all of that, you would still get a negative two charge. So we don't need to think about the individual charges on the, on the atoms. We should just be focusing on the overall charge here. Yeah, so it's five. Five electrons? What did you get? Um, nine, I think, but I erased. So we have 12 and plus three, so we would need um, and I got a different number. I got six. So let's try working that out. So let's see. What's the overall charge right now on the left-hand side of this equation? Twelve. Plus twelve. Yeah, plus twelve. Well, there's negative two here, and there's fourteen of these. Notice that each hydrogen here has a plus one, but there's fourteen of them. You can see why we had to get the stoichiometric coefficients before we can get the charges. But there's only one of these. Might have been a good idea to put the number one here to oh. emphasize we got one of these, so one negative two and 14 of these. So I got a plus 12 charge here. Okay. You were going to say? Six. I forgot yeah. the two, that's why I got the. Ah, and this has a plus six charge overall. Each chromium has a three plus charge, but there's two of the chromiums. So that's plus six overall. So six plus six. On the left or on the right? On, on the left. Yeah. And the best thing to do is just now double check. Add up all the charges on both sides and make sure they add up to zero. Well, here we would have negative 2 plus 14 um, minus 6, which is uh, positive 6. And over here we still have positive 6. So now the charge is balanced. We're not trying to make each charge each side neutral. We're trying to make the left side charge the same as the right side charge. So you can see that even if you understand the basic ideas here, it's really, really easy to lose points on the test by making careless mistakes. And if we get this wrong, the rest of the problem will be useless. So you really want to double check your work when you're balancing these charges uh, and work them out on paper. Don't try to do it in your head. Write down each of the individual sets of charges on paper. We have lots of different types of numbers here. We have these numbers, we've got subscripts, and we've got the stoichiometric coefficients. And they all have different types of meanings that you have to be careful about. Yeah. So formal charge, oxidation number, and overall charge is different. And what we yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So formal charge is something that we talked about briefly for completeness at the beginning here, but we're really not using that concept very much in this chapter because that's based on covalent bonding where the electrons are shared and we're focusing on how the electrons are transferred. So we're not thinking about formal charge. Oxidation number, we could assign the oxidation numbers here. We learned how to, we reviewed how to do that earlier, but it turns out you don't need to know the individual oxidation numbers to balance the overall reaction, at least not using this method from your textbook. Um, so we're not thinking about the charges of each individual element. We're focusing instead on the charges on the whole species as a whole. So this charge here, I wouldn't consider this to be an oxidation number or a formal charge. It's just, it's just the actual charge of the species. The, this is not an approximation. The actual charge of this species is negative 2, and it refers to the entire species, the chromium and the oxygen together. Make sense? OK. That would be a good step to go back and redo to make sure that you're comfortable with that, because that was an important step. Uh, all right, and I think we already balanced this one. This one was easier. 
Uh, so we got the six electrons here. Okay, so the step that we just did was in each half reaction, first we balanced the non-oxygen and non-hydrogen elements, like the chromium and the iodine. Then we balance the oxygens using water. Then we balance the hydrogens, which we can do in acidic solution by using H+. And then we balance the charges using electrons. Well, that's all in, the, in your textbook. Okay. Uh, do you guys get to use a cheat sheet on the tests or not? Um, he'll make one for us. He makes formula, formula sheets. I'm right. Sure. I don't know if you would put this in there, so you might want to ask him. So you may or may not have to memorize this, this technique. It's kind of complicated. There's a lot of steps.